I'd like you to think about how interesting a computer is that's communicating on a network. Like imagine the device that you are using right now to watch this video. That device has a network interface, some kind of an adapter. It's probably built into the device. It could be using wireless signals with Wi-Fi, or it could be maybe has a physical connection, it's plugged into the network, but either way, it has an interface and an IP address. Now, one of the questions I'd like to answer in this video is how in the world did your device and all the devices around you, how did they get IP addresses just automatically? It's done through the process of DHCP, which is an acronym that stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. And in this video, I'd like to explain it, give you some examples of it, and demystify it starting now. So let's imagine this is your home network. So we have the internet out here. I know I thought it was bigger too. And it's connected to our little home office router slash switch slash Wi-Fi device. Now those devices come in various shapes and sizes. Let me show you some examples. That device could look like this. This is a really old Apple router slash switch slash Wi-Fi device. And here's yet another example. This is a really old router. It has Wi-Fi also built into it that I've used in the past. Or maybe it looks more interesting, something like this. So this has some ports on the back. It has some antennae for wireless connectivity and it's acting as a router slash switch slash access point. And it's providing the access for your home network. So each of those has the ability of the functionality of a router and a Wi-Fi device and also a switch for the physical connections if you want to use physical connections into that device, providing all that functionality. Now, another question that often comes up is, well, in a corporate environment, what does a router and Wi-Fi device and a switch, what does that look like? Let me show you. So in a corporate environment, instead of having uh, the Wi-Fi and router and switch all built into one device, we might have a device like this. This is an access point used for the wireless functionality. And in many corporate environments, instead of just having one, we might have multiple devices all spread through the building to allow wireless or Wi-Fi access anywhere our customer goes in the building. For the switching functionality, instead of having little four ports in the back of our little home device in a corporate environment, we might have a device like this, which is a dedicated switch with dedicated switch ports on it. And this rah, is an example of a router, a dedicated router that we'd find in a corporate environment. But once again, in our home environments, our smaller environments, we're gonna have one device like this that has a integrated switch, the built-in Wi-Fi, and the integrated routing capabilities all in one handy little package. So in our home offices, in our smaller environments, we're gonna have this type of device with the router and Wi-Fi and switch all built in. But now let's take a look at how all these devices, whether they're connected wirelessly or wired, these printers, PCs, Internet of Things devices, let's take a look at how they can dynamically get IP addresses so they can function on the network. And a great way to think about how DHCP, Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, that's used to dynamically hand out IP addresses, it's a great way to think of it. Think of it like children who are going to their first day of school. So the kid's a little nervous or a little anxious, and they walk into the schoolroom, they see the teacher, they say, hi, I'm Billy, or Sally, or whatever the person's name is, and, the, and they say, I'd like to have a seat. <laughs> and the teacher says, great, yeah, uh, take seat number four, Billy. And Billy says, yes, I'll take it. And then the teacher says, have a seat. And that's dynamically allocating seats to children. Then the next person comes in and they say, hey, is there a teacher here? And the teacher says, yes, I'm here. And uh, you can have seat number nine. And then the child says, great, I'll take it. And the, and the teacher says, have a seat. That same process is being done by our routers. Think of the router like the teacher and the individual host, like your printers, your computers, your Internet of Things devices, think of those as the children entering the room or joining the network initially and asking, hey, is there a teacher present? Let me show you that process. It looks something like this. The PC, when it's first turned on, will issue a request to see if there's a server that can hand out an IP address, and it does a process called a discover. Think of the discover like a child asking, hey, is there a teacher present who can give me a seat? Now, in the case that there is a teacher, let's think of the router as the teacher, and the router will go ahead and make an offer. And that offer basically says, hey, glad to have you here, take seat number five. At which point Johnny says, or Sally, or whoever the client is, says, great, I'll take it. Now, that great, it isn't literally called a great, it's called a request. So think of a request like, the child or the client saying, yes, I will take that address that you offered me. And then it's followed up by the teacher or the router in this case that says, great. And the way the DHCP works is the four basic steps that we just talked about. The client is going to make a discover. Is there a DHCP server out there who can hand out an IP address to me? 
the offer comes in from the server saying, here's a beautiful IP address, I think you'll love it. The client does a request saying, I will take that address that you offered, and the server follows up with an acknowledgement. And if we look at the first initials of those, one way of remembering this is Dora, as in Dora the Explorer. And that can help remind us of the four packets involved initially when a client on an IP network is looking for and wanting to get an IP address assigned from a DHCP server. And in most cases, our little home router is the device pre-configured most of the time to dynamically listen for those discovers, make the offers from a pool of addresses that it has set up, and then give acknowledgements once the clients take those addresses. And that's where they're all tracked in this little router acting as a DHCP server. I also thought to myself, what would be really great is to show you those four packets that are involved in a DHCP exchange. Let me show you those right now. Now, what we're looking at here is a packet capture. Think of a packet capture that's something that's living on the network that's analyzing and looking at all the data that goes back and forth between a client and a server. And let's also imagine that we have a PC that just came online and it's asking for a DHCP address. And the router is gonna be acting as our DHCP server, which is handing out IP addresses. And so our initial packet is a discover, so this is the client saying, yeah, I need an IP address. Is there a DHCP server present? And then the next packet is from the server, which is an offer. And in that offer, it has the IP address that's being offered to the client. If the client likes it, it'll say, great. It'll send a request saying, I'll take that IP address. Thank you very much. It's fantastic. And it's followed up by an acknowledgement from the DHCP server saying, yep, I got the information that you want that address. I'll keep track of it. Have a great, great day. And most networking devices by default are going to be acting as DHCP clients with that initial discover message to get the ball rolling. And most home routers are pre-configured to act as DHCP servers. So it's a match made in heaven. So there's not a lot of mystery now about how a device gets an IP address. It's done through DHCP, the Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol. So thanks for joining me in this video and I'll see you in the next video or live event. Until then, be well, be happy, and be kind to everybody. Bye for now. I've been waiting on